Welcome along once again to a Star Sports video blog and it's the Lions on the agenda this time. Down under, ready to take on the Aussies. Um, we've already slammed the Aussies in the uh, Ashes video. I think we're probably going to do it the same again here. If this isn't the best looking front row I've ever seen, I don't know what is. I know they're a bit tight, but uh, God fit them all in. And we're privileged today to be joined by the man who is normally on the other side of the camera. I know you're always wondering who's doing these weird and wonderful videos for us. Well, it's Nick, a huge rugby fan. We thought it'd be good to get the, uh, the viewpoint of a, of a fan out there rather than us morons that just sit and watch the betting every day. Trev's with us once again to give us um, a little brief oversight of all the prices and I'll just muddle through as usual. But um, let's kick off with the outright prices. The Lions are big favourites, four to seven favourites, six to four Australia and 25 to one the draw. Um, Anyone have a real strong opinion here that wants to kick us off? Um, I had a strong opinion when we started talking about this just before we hit record. And then the more we talk about it, the more I actually change my mind and come around to supporting the Lions. Um, See, I that's was, the thing of being a fan, not a <laughs> panellist, Nick. Yeah. You know, you'll I was, stick to your beliefs. I was Aussie through and through. Uh, I just personally believe that the combined nations, teams tend not to perform well because they don't have a home, they don't have proper support behind them. I mean, I know everyone buys a Lions jersey, goes to the pub <laughs> in a Lions jersey and wears them for the next four years, but I still just would have thought that the Aussies would sneak it, but I just, I just looking at the predicted Lions team, I just can't see it happening. Well, I'm just glad we've got a Kiwi saying I'm Aussie through and through <laughs> on video, to be perfectly honest. Um, so, Nick's just about in the Lions camp, which means at four to seven, they're probably too short if he's a 50-50 leading towards that side. Trev? Yeah, I'm with uh, the four to seven being too short as my main thrust here. I mean, the tour's going okay, but they've played, what, one competitive game? Yeah, it's, uh, a, it's a problem, isn't they're it? They're likely to be undercooked for the first game. They could easily lose the first test. I've no doubt they're not, I don't doubt they're the strongest side. I think ultimately they may well prevail, but four to seven for a team that could easily go one nil down. Especially if North's injured, I just think that's too short and I'll be back in the Aussies review to cover in later on. I think it's a case of once again pessimism from the great British public. Mm. This isn't a very good Australian team. Australian sport in general seems to be on the decline. You look back 10 years ago, the Aussie team, name after name after name, this doesn't. I mean, they've got young James O'Connor who's yet to prove it at Super 15 level, starting at fly half. Position he hasn't really played in properly since he was school. Uh, I don't fear the Aussies whatsoever. I think that my one gripe would be, looking at this Lions team we've got here, we've got 10 Welshmen. If the Welsh went down there, they wouldn't be 4-7, to seven, would they? Mm. So I agree with you, the Lions may be too short, but I would be in that camp. On that front, should we, should we have a look at this Lions team we've, we've, we've come up with? Mm. Um, we'll get it on tape just to see how right or, or probably more how wrong we are. <laughs> but we, we've gone with Jones and Vunapola being the, uh, the props. Hibbard to start at a uh, hooker. O'Connell and Alan Wynne Jones to be the to be the uh, second rows. We've gone with Warburton and Lydiot. He's lipped to be the number eight and the back row was easily the hardest area for us, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean I think there could be a betting market just for who starts in the back row. Yeah. Honest, so. Oh we'll come on to that in a second. I think Phillips and Sexton are nailed on mm -hmm. to be the half backs. Robertson and O'Driscoll have got that partnership that doesn't look likely to be broken. Halfpenny's got a full back nailed down probably like the best player in the squad for me at the moment. And then Cuthbert and North, barring injuries, will be the wingers. And I just think that's far too strong and powerful a team for the Aussies to cope with. The front, the front five, the pack will dominate. They will dominate. Mm -hmm. if, the, if the back row can be as good as we think they can and dominate the breakdown, what a platform for a great set of backs. Yeah, I mean, I think the Aussies haven't had a good front row since the early 90s when they won the 91 World Cup. <laughs> Um, on top of that, we haven't even come on to the possible substitutes bench and the main thing that will happen down under is happy hour, 60 minutes, bring on the impact players. If you've got the likes of Rory Best coming on at Hooker or Tom Youngs as a little bit of an injection or stability, you've got Manu Tuolangi. Just Tom bring... Croft coming on with 20 together, one of the biggest athletes in the game yeah, as well. And I mean, we haven't brought in Toby Falatel with his offloading. Like, I just think... The team of clones that we've dubbed the Aussies just aren't going to do it. If I was playing centre and I was a bit knackered and I saw Manu Tuolangi coming on as well, <laughs> I wouldn't really fancy it. Um, well, I'm going to be in the Lions camp. 
you're sitting on the fence but leaning towards the lights, you're massively in the Aussie camp. So let's have a look at the series outright market. I say don't be pessimistic, I want to tip up the 3 0, and I'm dying to tip up the lines to win 3 0 at about um, sort of 5 to 2, but I'm going to go with 2 1. Um, we always have a, a history of making these things difficult. So for me, at 7 to 4, it'd be 2 1 the British Lions. Trevor? 2 um, 1 Australia. Two I, think one. They, I think they go 1 0 up. Uh, I can see a striking back in the last game. Play the value 2 1 Australia. 1 0 one wouldn't be worse than a call. Could get a draw here. Yeah. You know, it's only a four-point uh, market, so it draws, you know... If you don't have a dream, Rodney, yeah, well, I'd never dream come I'm true. At, I'm looking at six, <laughs> a six to four, three to one. I'm finding a 20 to one in shot in here. One all draw series is not the worst bet in the world. Well, I've had enough of everyone putting up big price winners next to me on these panels, so let's hope that one gets beat. So, 2-1 Lions for me, 2-1 Australia for him. Casting vote, Nick? 2-1 to someone is uh, is my wise words for now. So, I mean, I, I genuinely just think the one thing that we can be sure of is it will be 2-1. Um, I do, I do think the Lions will take it. I'm right. putting my, I'm nailing my colours to the flag post and saying Lions two one. Well, with whatever you back, all the best of luck. I'm sure we've got more British viewers and followers than Aussie ones for these video blogs. So don't be like the rest of the British public. Don't be pessimistic. Stick with your beliefs, the beliefs you know we're better than them, and get stuck in to the Lions at four to seven. Give us a call here at Star Sports. 08,000, 521, We've got hundreds of different markets on the lines, top scorers, first try scorers, all the usual stuff. So whatever you back, enjoy your early mornings and all the best of luck.